Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Australian Report. We'll be looking at the ASX 200 and also um, Westpac as well as an example um, of the banks. Now, uh, on the four hour chart here, we're looking for, um, this is pretty much the same for all the sectors and uh, other indices to the, uh, uh, the, you know, the top 20, the top 50, the top 100 and so on and so on. Um, so, in a nutshell, we're counting an impulse wave, which is a five wave structure to the upside. So roughly we're looking at 6,000 here. We're looking at five waves in terms of one and two here. Nice strong third wave here. We were looking for a classic trading levels pattern across this level here. So that's the arrival, uh, the reaction, the first high above the level, and then an ABC, ABC correction here and then finding support and then moving up from that point. So um, that's pretty much what we've got uh, here. And it's, it's important to recognize this as well. Um, <clears throat> um, it just makes life a little bit easier because uh, after a while, you'll just end up trading to this point here, to the arrival, exiting here, and then just waiting patiently for a, um, an entry um, at the right place over here. Uh, and we'll look at this in, in a bit more detail in a moment. Um, however, um, when we get the extension in the third wave here, then normally as a rule of thumb, we can expect wave one here and wave five to be roughly the same length here. So we should come quite close to um, 6,000 uh, here for wave five of three of of, of a larger three here and this count would be in line with the uh, US markets as well. Uh, the structure for the banking sector coming up here is a little bit a uh, little bit different. Uh, the, the sector is the same but each because there's a um, you know Westpac and ANZ have pretty much got the same count. Uh, CBA from its lows not too far behind but then the other banks Bendigo and the Bank of Queensland uh, so on are, um, uh, are, are different altogether. Um, and then you've got the finance sector, the XFJ, which is obviously includes the insurance companies and so on. And uh, that's got its own uh, pattern happening as well. Uh, so let's just go to the hourly chart and check this out. But our target is, well, really our target is, is in group two just before uh, the 6,000. But it's pretty obvious that, um, you know, markets get, Big numbers are like magnets, and the market tends to have them as psychological uh, price points to be, you know, uh, reckoned with. So, on the hourly chart uh, here, let me just open this up a little bit. This, um, I'll just come here. We're talking about these two patterns here. Um, this particular one here, um, we were looking at because we could count uh, three waves down here. It's possible to count it as five in terms of one and two and three and four and five. But the wave four is is a bit a bit too high and overlaps wave one here. So that's why I've called it a three wave price action. And you know, the A wave can be five waves or three waves. So in this case here, I've got it as three waves. And in this case over here, I've got it as five waves. If it was five waves here, then we'd have an ABC correction, as we would over here. Um, but the, the three waves here would produce uh, a steeper five waves coming down here, taking this low out here. Because we've got three waves here, that means it's um, either a triangle pattern, double zigzag, or a flat pattern here. Um, so I called it a flat, which is more common. Um, and that means that it's flat because basically it just stays, you know, within its highs and lows here. Um, and that's, this is pretty much what's occurred um, here as an A wave, a B wave, and that really can be placed uh, over here and should be here. And I'll need to extend that, so I made a small error in there. Um, but that's okay. We still figured we had more to go there, and it's still possible to come down to this space here as well. But none of that really interested me here because we were really just looking at taking out the top here. And yes, you could have got a better trade in in here um, um, after the Thursday being uh, all certainly bearish in the morning, and then in in most cases recovered from that. So normally 
Thursday being the bear day and, and buying in the afternoon session and then buying Friday morning, buying Friday afternoon if it looks strong, buying Monday morning and sitting tight and taking a bit of profit on the Tuesday with, with the normal site, with normal bullish weekly cycle and then going through Wednesday and Thursday which will be the days that can take out your stops if you don't have a strategy to, um, to handle uh, that scenario there. So um, at this stage here, um, our target is at 6,000 or um, in this space here uh, within group two from five, nine here. Uh, we have group one, which is 10, 20 and 30. Then the midpoint is 50 here. Um, there'll be a correction there. And then we enter group two, which is 65, if I can get that there, 65 roughly, uh, 72, 72 anyway, and um, and a and 80 here so expect a correction within this if you wanted to take profit well then the 72 is a place to take profit um, if you wanted to um, add further going up here normally you you can add on 50 once it becomes support so that <clears throat> this this larger pattern here of the arrival the reaction the first high above the level then the correction in a very small way that's the same thing that will happen at um, at the 50 here it happened at the 20 here as well so the arrival the reaction the first high above the level then the correction but in this case here it stayed uh, as support here so this is a classic trading levels pattern number two which means it's just a slight variation of, of number one um, so if you're going to add again, if you're going to take profit, you'll take part profit at 50. And if uh, you're going to move in, you can take part profit at 50 here, wait, and then get back in on 50 over this side once it becomes the tested support. Or you can just normally go through that because it's sometimes when you get out of the market, it's harder to get back in. Okay, but you don't want to go adding to the position at this stage up here. You can do on top of 72 if you're sort of you know feeling a bit cocky, and you can also add on top of uh, 80 as well to get up to the closest largest number. But make sure you got it as tested support. Um, this little move up through here, um, I'm going to have just go straight to the 100 ticks, and you know it's probably better to count this on 20 ticks um, in here. And uh, in this case here, it's a, we can see that um, uh, this is the uh, this one here looks like the low here, and in some cases probably this low here. And uh, on the cash market, this is the low here. And on the cash market, this counts quite nicely as wave one up here and wave two back here. Um, so I've had to sort of make a bit of a decision about all of this and I think that um, I'll just stay with this wave C for the while being on wave uh, wave C or 4 being on this low right here and then counting 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 here for wave 1 and A and a B and a C here for wave 2 here and then the beginning of wave 3 moving up here so that should take us should be wave 3 should be longer than wave one and we would expect Friday and Monday to be the bullish days. So if I put this on 20 ticks here just for a moment you'll um, you'll see that it's got a lot more detail here and you know um, I was asked about the five minute chart um, here as well so I'll go to the five minute chart here I'll just go back to the 100 here and the the um, the thing with the tick chart is is quite good really because what happens is that um, this is 100 ticks so I know that the price has changed in here 100 times before the bar has been completed so on the futures market for example that's traded overnight here um, if you had 100 ticks or 40 ticks or 50 ticks or 20 ticks that means that you know the price has changed you know 20 times or 50 times within that time period and you know that that you know what's inside that bar basically you know how many orders have traded well on the futures market or how many contracts have traded at that particular price um well in that in that in that in that bar basically you know when you go to a five minute chart here which is you know 15 minutes, five minutes, it's all quite, you know, it's a standard sort of thing. You can see uh, just generally in here that, you know, it's a little bit more holy in here, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, um, it looks a bit like Swiss cheese in a way, uh, in a sense. Um, and the thing here is that, um, you know, when you've got a, uh, a five minute 
um, a five minute bar, I mean, you don't know how many contracts have been traded in that particular po in that time frame there, do you? I mean, it, it, it could be three or it could be, you know, a hundred. So um, you don't know how empty or full that bar is, basically. So the tick chart will give you a, an overall more solid way of actually looking at it. Of course, you can still get the count here and you can always produce quite a nice uh, count with, with this um, in mind as well. So from this low here, we're looking at one and two and three and four and five here. And in this case here, you could count it as, as I count it down as an A and a B and a C here. Um, you could count it down as one and two and three and four and five, but having wave four here, um, overlapped wave one here, which is not a big deal in derivatives. Um, when Elliot himself, um, you know, discovered, observed, uh, stumbled upon whatever the the the, the, the structures uh, within here, they were done on, you know, uh, the Dow Jones as such. So didn't really have that high leverage at that stage. Um, but still, anyway, um, basically the A wave the B wave and the C wave to here. And as I mentioned, we can count this as wave one and two here, but I'm just gonna take it from this point here first because that way we won't run into any mistakes at the top. Uh, when we move up here further, we can, we can always add a wave and we can check it and go through it, but <coughs> putting in a false target wouldn't be the way to go with this. I mean, because there is quite a nice five wave structure coming down uh, through here. The other way to count uh, all of this too would be um, in more of a triangle pattern, A, B, C, D, E, and A, and a B, and a C, and a D, and an E wave here. There's a few ways you could actually sort of look at it. The cash has got a different sort of perspective on it, but I like this being the low here at, um, at this point here. The other point here too is that we're, we are at 5.9 here, um, 5,930. 5, so 30 is the top of group one here. So, um, you know, you can see how this one here, it just moves straight through this level here, but when it reacted here, it had the first high above the level, then an ABC correction here. So it's basically stepped up, hasn't it? It's got tested support, so you could go long above this high here, for instance. Um, this has got a minimal support uh, here at the moment. Um, so um, normally in this case here, the next, this is, this is, um, uh, subgroup one here, this level, these are subgroup one, subgroup two, sub, subgroup three here, and then you see 33 here, so that's mi the micro levels at the next level down, so one, two, and three, so having support on three here um, is, is also critical as well, and then you can go to the midpoint here, which would be five, so nice tested support of five. I would use five to trigger my long trade here, um, otherwise we could get a spike down here first, uh, and then moving up through there, but definitely the trend uh, is up. And um, we'll just have a quick look at Westpac. Um, I'm not going to look at um, uh, the other ones, uh, CBA and ANZ, because I'm doing some work on that for education. But um, uh, in this case here, we've been looking for wave one and two here, wave, uh, wave three coming up here. So we've got wave one and two and three and four and five here. So. Um, you know, this is these have these these banking stocks are uh, sort of lagging uh, the ASX 200 and the the mid caps and the small caps are the ones that are really leading all of this higher. Um, so these are lagging uh, somewhat, um, and they're all a little bit different. But we should be able to go long um, on the banks today, uh, even though the ANZ fell out of bed, it pulled back to its right retracement level. Uh, and moved up, you can do a robo entry on that. Um, yeah, so we should see these push up for a couple of days uh, now. All right, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the weekend.